Hello and welcome back to Storytime with Mary's Child Development Series. We are continuing our conversation with Baba Dazi. Baba is a clinical psychologist from Hearts and Minds Aloud. Hello Baba, how are you? I'm very well Mary, it's good to see you again. Fantastic, great to see you. Today we are having a really important conversation about diversity and how we support our young children to be better versions of themselves and to appreciate their friends and their loved ones for who they are. Um, so Baba, I really want to start by asking you a few questions. I'm really excited to have you here again because you're the expert and you can help us to get deep into the minds of our children. So we know that diversity comes in many shapes and forms, ones that are physical that you can see, such as your color of your skin, and some that are invisible, such as your mental ability. So I wanted to start with mental ability and how we support children to understand that other children are completely diverse and completely different for themselves in terms of their mental capacity. And it's a brilliant topic that you've picked up. Um, I wonder how you, you explain diversity to your child anyway, so that they understand um, what it is that they are being mindful of. But I guess in very simple terms, you could let them know that, like you've mentioned, um, we are different, right? As human beings, we are very much alike, uh, but we're also different. So, I mean, with children, one of the things that they will be exposed to is, you know, disparities in mental ability in the classroom, in that um, some children will perform very well in a certain subject at certain times. It might not even be all the way through at certain times, maybe because they have the interest or because they are exposed to extra tuition at home or for one, one reason or the other. Uh, we also know that sometimes uh, the social and cultural environment of children impact how they even receive and process information and learn. In that we know that conservative or Eastern cultures encourage children to be less I use the term loosely forward in that they are, they are more restrained in expressing themselves or engaging. And in certain cultures, it's considered a sign of respect. Some other cultures encourage children to engage, to express themselves, to be as verbal and vocal as they can. As teachers, it's really great to, accept, to, to help children accept um, the other person's ability, the other person's contribution in class, okay? Expose children to work. So for example, um, expose children to activities that helps everybody contribute in that um, everybody's part of everybody's contribution is important and somehow adds to the um, goal of the activity right um, and celebrate everybody's contribution as well so basically as teachers I guess our responsibility is to highlight the strengths of um, our children um, reinforcing the fact that while everybody's ability might be different at that level they are equally important. And by doing that, we teach um, the children to pick up and do see. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, oh. I want to move on to the less invisible diversities mm. and more physical. So we have so many different children that have different physical abilities and you know, some have physical disabilities. You know, mm. somebody might have a birthmark on their face, for example. And we want to make sure that children are able to see through those disabilities and appreciate them for who they are. So can you tell us a bit about how we can support children um, in appreciating different physical um, abilities as well? Keep an open channel of communication so the children can always come to you and ask you why my friend has this and I don't. I get along well with them, yes, but they seem a little different in this ability. Um, they are not able to do this as well as I am or I can do this as well as they are they look different in A, B, C, and D ways. Does that make them, in quotes, well, they probably wouldn't be asking if it makes them less of a person, but the point is that your explanations should take away any, um, any thoughts that would make them think the other person was less of a person because of a disability. So I think that communication is key. You know, short answer, we should keep an open channel of communication with children. Thank, thank you, Baba. And 
what you've said is so important. It's so important to me, and I'm sure it's important to um, other parents and carers as well, of especially very small children. So my own daughter, uh, Maya, she was born with a birthmark around her foot, um, around her ankle. Okay. And we just said, that is um, a, your own personal bracelets around your ankle. Brilliant. Um, aided now that she's grown up a bit. But, um, you know, children are born in so many different ways. And we obviously, we have to teach children how to love each other. Um, Absolutely. And, and so, thank, thank you, thank you so much. For it's really important. You're really welcome. And I like, I like what you did with your daughter and that telling her her personal bracelet will make her own it so that she doesn't feel, you know, out of place with other children. And she's able to explain it so that they accept it as well. So that was a brilliant approach. Exactly. Um, no, that's great. And then back to another, I want to call it invisible, but it's a bit of a diverse topic as well and mm. it can cause conflict um mm -hmm. religion is a topic that has caused so much conflict around the world and has also brought so much unity and joy yeah. around the world as well but how yeah. do we explain to these very very young children you know two three four years old about mm. religion and how different people have different religions but we still are all one global community how do we explain that to children absolutely yeah the question of religion is a, is a, it almost feels heavy because we know that it's a point of uh, almost contention uh, among different uh, people now, different countries and different races and all that. Now, it's, I think it's interesting or it's important to note that children may not understand faith like the way that adults do. And a lot of the um, disagreements that we have about people is, we have with other people, sorry, from other religions is, is Based, or it's, it's focused on our understanding of faith or the sort of relationship that we built with um, whichever supreme being that we believe in. Usually children don't have that. Uh, they, they haven't gone to that level where, where they built that faith. So basically what they pick from or what their understanding of religion develops from what we are modeling as adults. Okay, so it always comes back to adults. It, it always comes back to what you are doing, what you are teaching, and not necessarily what you are, you are saying. Because I, I, I mean, I read a statement that says attitudes are caught, not taught. So it's basically what you're doing that your children will pick up. So if you're being tolerant and if you're being inclusive, your children will learn to be tolerant and inclusive. They might understand that I believe in A, B, and C because I go to, and I go to the mosque with my parents. Somebody else goes to the shrine and somebody else goes to the church. And they, they, they probably just know that as a fact. But there might not be any you know, emotional or any extra value attached to that unless adults are teaching them to attach that sort of value. It's critical for parents to model the, 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 um, the best behavior possible um, around how they accept religion and how they evaluate other people around religion so that um, children can pick up on these attitudes and um, exhibit them as well. Fantastic. This has got to be one of my favorite quotes. Attitudes are caught and not taught. That is incredible. And that's actually something that we should all be living by because that just that kind of sums everything that we're talking up about to one. Attitudes are caught and not taught. I love that. So <laughs> so Baba, you know, today it's been such a great conversation so far. And we've obviously been talking about diversity. We've spoken about diversity in mental ability, which is so important, in physical ability but also religion. And there's one that we haven't spoken about and one that's gripping the world at the moment, which we really need to discuss. And that is around ethnicity, nationality, and race. Um, it's such an important topic. And I think that at the moment, the way the world is going, it's really important to teach kids at such a young age how to embrace um, their own uniqueness and their own diversity, while also appreciating and accepting their friends and loving them for who they are. So can we talk a little bit about race and how we support these young children to become better versions of themselves? Mm -hmm. It's such a, a great topic that you, you, you brought up, Mary. And with everything that's been happening in the last few weeks, you know, you get the sense that there's never, there, there isn't an age that's too early to start, um, you know, exposing children to this. Being able to understand the differences that, um, people have and accepting them is important. And I mentioned that people see those differences as early as age two, sometimes even earlier, but at age two, it's, you know, it's a bit more concrete. Now, 
is not so much the differences they notice as the meaning they ascribe to those differences, right? And like we said, yes, um, um, when parents teach them to be more accepting, children are inclined to be accepting as well. Um, another thing to teach children, I mean, even outside of, of, of um, accepting different races, this is a value that I guess all parents, most parents, if not all, teach their children anyway, which is the um, value of respect, right? Um, in that we know that a, a key feature of you know, people coming from different countries or cultures or whatever is that people speak different languages. They are, you know, they act differently and they dress differently. They speak different languages, but everybody responds to the universal language of respect. And, you know, that's what you want to teach children in that what, while other people are respecting them, they are respecting other people as well. We are more alike than different in that we have lots of similarities as human beings. So basically, I think that children will be able to do this when you teach them to respect people. Okay, I respect you and I, I accept everything that you come with and hopefully you will do the same for me too they can't vouch for people doing that for them but the chances are that when they set the tone with the respect that they show other people are likely to reciprocate that respect yeah so okay. no, that's really important okay. no it's fine um it's really really important and i think um also helping children to accept their own uniqueness as well and their own um i would say ethnicity so my my own children um they are, they are born and bred in the UK. They're British by their birth and by their passport, but they're also Ghanaian. And I speak tree with my children and they understand and you know, are able to respond as well. And I think that's really important for young children to teach them about their own background as well. And also help them to appreciate their friends and knowing that they're, they're different from their friends, but they're also the same. And it, it really, really um, is such an important thing to do for yes. our, our young children. You, know, you can talk children through it. Well, we spoke about open communication, which is brilliant, but sometimes you can, um, through the, the, the activities that bring them you know, joy, you can also communicate this message in a very subtle way. In that, for example, the books that you read to children could have you know, um, diversity being communicated in this, so that people with yes. different skin color and you know, different cultures who are engaging each other in ways that make sense to them. Okay, even in, 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 in their play, you can incorporate things that mirror or communicate diversity. And then once children are able to, once they're comfortable with this while they play and while they read and all of that, they're able to transfer this into real life. It's easier for them to transfer it and then, you know, they identify with it better in real life. So that's also a way of um, bringing the message home to them that uh, it's okay for people to be different. Brilliant. This is such an important conversation that we're having. Um, so, Baba, thank you so much. Today, um, we've been talking about diversity and we've spoken so much about all the different ways that people are diverse. Not all of them. We've touched on just a few, actually, because people can be different in every single way. Oh, I've got three and a four year old. And they're completely Absolutely. different. And they are siblings. So, imagine all of the other children in the world and how different. You know, they, they, they all are as well. So we all have to mm -hmm. learn to appreciate each other um, yeah. for who we are. So thank you so much, um, Barbara. Please remind us how we can get in touch with you if we want to have um, uh, or continue the conversation with you. Absolutely. So with hearts and minds allowed at gmail.com, hearts and minds allowed on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, yes, I can be reached on any of these. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much for chatting to us today and for hanging out with Storytime with Mary. And we will talk again next time, Barbara. You're most welcome, Mary. The pleasure is all mine. I'm grateful that you made time for me to come here and to include me in this very useful and interesting conversation. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Mary. <laughs>